Wednesday morning. Can we all please rise to our feet? And kindly welcome your neighbor to the left and to the right. And those in front and behind you as well. Today is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Many of us are glad to be alive today. Oh, not all hands are up. So some are not glad. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Many of us are glad we're in church. Praise the name of Jesus. The best place to be is in the Lord's presence. He is ever faithful. He is ever merciful. Always loving. Praise the name of Jesus. Can we just lift up our hands and appreciate God for the gift of life. He woke us up this morning and enabled us to see a new day. Sometimes we take waking up for granted. But it's a gift. And we are alive purely by his mercies. And Father, we say thank you. We slept like logs last night. We had no clue as to what was happening around us. But you woke us up this morning at the right time. With breath in our nostrils. Our heart still pumping. We say thank you. For you alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve all the adoration. For there is none like you. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The ancient of days. Our bridge over troubled waters. You are the monarch of the universe. The possessor of the heavens and the earth. You are the shepherd of our souls. And Father, we are gathered today unto you, not because of men. And we ask, Lord, that you honor us with your presence. Glorify yourself in our midst this day. Do that which only you can do. Overrode the agenda of men. As this service is in heaven, let it be here on earth in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, Father. In Jesus' name. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Father, you alone deserve our praise. You alone deserve our worship. 
receive it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we please commit all we shall do this day to God's hands? God has a plan. God has things set out to happen in today's service. I'd like us to pray that this service shall be as the Lord has ordained it. That everything we shall do shall glorify him. Every song we shall sing shall glorify him. Every word spoken this morning from this pulpit shall glorify him. Every dance we dance will glorify him. That in all we shall do, Father, be glorified. That flesh will not be exalted in any way. Flesh will not be glorified in any but Father, you and you alone. Please pray in the name of Jesus. We're here to encounter God and God we shall see. We're here to encounter God. And God we shall see. We're here to hear God and God we shall hear. Reba Shande Kahilibo Sande Kahilibo Shande. Pray for as many as will minister this morning. The praise and worship team. I believe there'll be a special number. A vessel will bring forth the word. Pray that God will use his ones to his glory. Mashande Kahilibo Sande Kaharabashanda. Rimbo Sundo Kohorobo Shinde Kahilibo Bobo Shagadagaya. Rimande Kahiribo Shande. Remo Shande Kahiribra Kahala Baba Sondo Kohorobo Shanda. Rebo Shande Kahilibo Sande Kahiribo Shanda. Father, in all we shall do this morning, be glorified. In all we shall do, be glorified. Kahirebo Shande, Kahirebo Shanda. As we sing and dance, Lord, be glorified. Remo Shande, Kahirebo Shande, Kahala Baba. As the world will come, Lord, be glorified. Kahirebo Shande, Kahala Baba. Remando Korobo Boshege de Kariba Bashogorogo. Remande Kahilebo Shande, Kahirebo Boshanda. Father, overrode the agenda of man. Overrode the agenda of man. Overrode the agenda of man. Kahirebo Shande, Kahirebo Bobo. Remande Kahilebo Shande, Kahiribra Kalababa. Remando Kohoro Boshande, Kalibre Lebo Bobo. Rima Mandoro Brakalababa Shagaragaya. Rima Sande Karibro Kolebo Boshande Karibro Lebo Bobo. Rima Nde Kahiribo Boshagaragaya. We pray for the vessel that you've ordained to bring forth the world this morning. Lord, we ask you grant utterance, clarity of thought, and accuracy of speech. Rima Shande Kalibo Boshanda. That every word spoken shall be as you've ordained it. Every word spoken shall be as you've ordained it in the name of Jesus. Rima Shande Kalibro Lebo Bobo Bobo Boshanda. Every word spoken shall give life to us in the name of Jesus. Rima Ndo Koribra Lebo Boshagadagaya. Ribra Kalabo Shande Kalibro Lebo Boshagede Gari Baba. Rima Mando Koribro Lebo Boshagade Kalibro Lebo Boshagadagaya. In the name of Jesus. Can we please pray for ourselves? You know why you're here. Praise the name of Jesus. You know why you're here. The scripture says that God loads us daily with benefits. As a portion of blessings are located to you this morning or this day. And I believe part of the blessings will be delivered to you during this service. So talk to your father. What are your expectations? You're not here by accident. You may think you're here by routine, but you're not here by accident. God is not an accidental God. God is an intentional God. God does things intentionally. So that you're here this morning before God God. God has something he wants to deliver to you. So talk to your father this morning. What are your expectations? His ears are not heavy that he cannot hear. And his arms short that he cannot deliver. He's all knowing. He's all powerful and he's ever present. 
to talk to him this morning. Lay your petitions, lay your burdens at his feet. Express your heart to him this morning. And God is able to do that which no man can do. God is able to do that which no man can do. Every door that seems shut, God can open it. And when God opens it, no man can shut it. And every door that man has opened in front of God, can, God can shut those doors and they will never open again. God is ever ready to fight our battles for us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And so Father, here we are once again in your presence. We ask Lord that you do unto us as you propose in the name of Jesus. We pray that no man, woman, boy or girl shall go back the same way that we've come in the name of Jesus. We shall live here bigger, better and stronger. To the glory of your holy name alone. That is our prayer. In Jesus name. Amen. And if you have a testimony you want to share with God's people, there will be a pastor waiting to attend to you at the workstation. Enjoy the service. God bless. Can we put our hands together for our Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Is worthy. Hallelujah. Is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's lift those hands to worship our God. It's worthy. You are whom you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say you will do. You never fail. Change. You are faithful to the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you.
praising you yet no one sums you up then I ask the Lord what name fits you
You know, you always start from behind and it takes you forward. Is that it? We say, No more beauty, no more 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 Go, 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 yeah Everybody! to be in the presence of the Lord. Our God is a good God. Irrespective of whatever you're going through, our God is a good God. He knows everything. From the beginning to the end, he knows it. From the day you were born till this moment, your path has been aligned by him. So whatever you're going through in there, he said in his word, he said your destiny in advance, he knows it. He said even the good works that you will do is already there, he knows it. So why are we worried? It is good to be in the presence of the Lord. Oh, Father God, we just appreciate you this morning. Oh, Lord, we just thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for our loved ones. We thank you even for the things you have not yet done. Because we have asked in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you told us, Lord, in your word, that whatever we ask in that name, you said it will be done. So, Father, Lord God, we're not going to move by sight. We're not going to move by whatever we see. But, Lord, we're depending on your word. And your word says it is well. Thank you, Almighty Father. Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So we're having a testimony time. Praise the Lord. Well, we have to testify us this morning. But I know that we all have testimonies. Being here this morning is a testimony. And I want you to understand and to know that there is no testimony that is too small. Some of us consider some things that, ah, this one is very small. <laughs> it is not small. Because when ordinary stomach ache lands you in the hospital and you are on drip for two weeks, then you know it is not small. Okay? So please let us try and give our testimonies, no matter what it is. We want to appreciate the Lord God Almighty for what he has done in our lives for what he's doing in our life, and for what he's going to do in our lives. Praise the Lord. So the first testifier this morning is our brother, Oluwatui Olumide. Can you please encourage him to come forward, please? Brother, Oluwatui Olumide. Encourage him, please. Encourage him, please. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is God in this church. And Amen. I'm here to testify for what God has done. God of this commission. I give God all the glory. Amen. My name is Oluwati Olumide once again. And it's a vow that I will come here to testify to God. And that's what I'm doing this morning. I appreciate God of this commission. On the 7th of June, this very year, last month, 
I was delivered from medium Kirikiri prison. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And the, this church, they always come to a chapel. We have a church in the medium prison, Freedom Chapel. They always come there every first Saturday of, of month, of every month. So they came last month, fought. And by the grace of God, I was serving there, just like my, God, my life depend on that service. I was a sound engineer there. And they always come to share the promises to us. I pray to God. I say, God, please let this promise of today address my issue. I prayed and I cried. And when I picked my own uh, share of promises, I, I picked Zephaniah 3 verse 20, and I paraphrase NIV. At that time that I will gather you, at that time that I will take you home, I will give you praise and fortune even before your very eyes, says the Lord. I pick these promises and I keep praying to God. I say, God, please, let your promise come to pass in my life. And the part B, the second part of the, the, the promise is when Brahulimide, Pastor Lumide came to preach. He now picked a, 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 a chapter in the Bible, he picked Psalm 121. He now said we should personalize it. You know, I, I was at the altar. So when I, when I was personalizing it, I called my name. I said, I, Olimide. He was like, no, bro, call your own name. I said, my name is Olimide. He was like, wow. So, and initially, my prosecutor has been asking for money. He said, we should bring money. I don't have anybody that can give me money. He said, we should bring 500. In fact, I've even uh, uh, give people to the court clerk that they should pay money. They pay money and they go. But me, I'm still there. I don't have money to pay. And I said, God, I don't have anybody. I look unto you. My help come from you. Sir, God is good. My God is good. On the 7th of June, after I do my midnight prayer, I just say, let me sleep. And I heard my name, Oluwatu Olimide, the church and I quitted. I woke up. I woke up early in the morning, around 4. I started sharing my team. My people were like, ah, Pastor Olimide, go to court now. When they deliver you, then you will call us, then we share. I say, please take whatever you want to take. I'm not coming back to this place today. They are laughing. They don't know what I saw. They are laughing. So when I went to court, my lawyer was saying something against what God had said. He said, ah, they've, given, they've forwarded your, your case to one uh, the department. They wanted to da, da, da. I said, please, I'm going home today. It was like, wow, no problem. And he tried his best. The said, and a woman just stood up. This is a court of God. You know, this, this is how they used to set their own court. And the, the woman just went to my, uh, my prosecutor and he whispered to, to his ear. And the man stood up again and he said, ah, uh, Justice, I don't want to call her name. He said, ah, Justice, he said, you still have the judiciary, they, are, they speak all their English, that you still have the power to discharge this case if you want to. And Justice Refessor said, wow, that in fact, he cannot, you know, send this, back to, this man back to prison. That since 2018, February 1st, no complainer, no witness, no evidence, no anything. That she, she's discharging this case right now. And I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, I asked him, I said, how did he get there? How did he get to that prison? What happened? And honestly, it was a mistake. Because he was a security man for one of the banks. And there was a robbery in that bank. And they now picked all the security men. And said that they were accomplices to that robbery. Unfortunately, he didn't, they took four of them. And later on, three were bailed. And he was the only one that couldn't have anybody to bail him. And because of that, he was there for over four years. Yes, in that place. So you see, when we give praise to God, it is because we know who our God is. And thank God for those people that went for evangelism in the prison because they were able to boost his faith and he also held on. You can imagine the number of years he had already lost. But I'm telling you, he's going to recoup it. In a big way, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because he's going to collide with someone that God is going to send to him. 
that will turn his life around. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm calling the next testifier, Sister Giwa. Can you please come forward? Please encourage Sister Giwa to give her testimony. Encourage her, please. Good morning, church. I have come to give glory to God Almighty for what he has done. My testimony is in two parts. The first part is to thank God for healing for my whole family. My whole household was sick for about uh, two weeks. The nurses, the, the helpers, everybody, myself, my husband. I couldn't even come to showers last week or church. But God is faithful and everybody is doing very well. So I said I have to give glory to God. The second part of the testimony is this. In my office, um, the edge of my office is actually before the valley, down. It's very, very, the valley is deep. It's actually like a flowing water area. But um, some people encroached, built some houses around there. We are like up there and the valley is here. And somehow they built, there's a church, one of all these churches that build their churches with zinc and all. And they actually built to the wall of the valley. I mean, and it could collapse any minute. So we went to them and appealed to them that they should give the Lagos State distance that is usually given between two places in case of incidents. And this place is an erosive place. In fact, the government is even doing some routes right now through that place. And we appealed to them, they refused. We wrote a letter, they refused. And we just prayed and left. This uh, last uh, Friday rain, everybody remembered big rain overnight till Saturday. And this church was doing night VG from Friday night to Saturday. As soon as they finished, because there is a room the pastor's uh, room, he keeps all, they keep all the children there during the VG to sleep, and his altar is next to the office. And um, as soon as they finished, all the children left. He left. Not up to one hour or 30 minutes. The fence from our office, as high as that, just came down the rain, straight Onto that, their zinc crushed it, destroyed it. The altar, n nobody was hurt. No single person was hurt. But the the testimony is this: that Wednesday evening, I was in the office, and um, I had this strong intuition in the morning that we must pray around that office. I got to office, got busy with all the work of the day. And by the time I looked, it was 6.30. Most of the people that are Christians that will pray with me had gone. Only one fountainer, which is, um, was with me. And I told her, I said, let's go and pray around. This is how I felt. But I was so much in a hurry to get home. But I stood, I said, we have to pray. And we went round and prayed. We prayed. We didn't even know we prayed up to an hour. I know I got home very late that day. I just want to give God the glory that God is directed that not one soul. And you know what it is in Nigeria. Whether it's your fault, it's not your fault. And they believe that you are the one that your property fell on them and things like that and anything happens. It's life. It's God. And we are talking about life. But God is so faithful that as they left, nobody... All was broken was just the building, Amen. sites of the building that was attached. Amen. I just come to give God the glory. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. When you have intuition, when you have discernment, please don't wave it aside. Pray. The Holy Spirit is always with us. Well, I just have one testimony here that somebody sent to me. I just want to read it. So that it can encourage us that whatever you're going through, God is aware. And I'll read. Mr. Samuel K. had a job interview to attend at 10 a.m., but his wife developed complications at 9 a.m. 
he decided to take the wife to the hospital and leave for the interview afterwards. But on their way to the hospital, the taxi broke down. It was already 10.30 a.m. before he could get another taxi. He arrived at the hospital at 11 a.m., dropped the wife, and used the same taxi to go to the interview. He arrived at the interview venue at 12 noon, which was two hours late. He rang the bell, but no one opened the door. Meanwhile, earlier, at 10 a.m., the company mail delivery had rung the bell, but no one opened the door too. So when the door was finally opened, Mr. Samuel K. said, I am sorry I came. He, want, he wanted to apologize for coming late, but the secretary interrupted before he could even finish his statement and ushered him to the boardroom. The secretary said, I apologize, Mr. Samuel K., for keeping you waiting till 10 a.m. We actually heard when the bell rang at 10 a.m., but we were held up in a meeting with our company suppliers. However, we have sat since 8 a.m. to deliberate on your job specification, your office, and the salary. And Mr. Samuel K. was baffled and said, Ma'am, I haven't been interviewed yet. The MD answered him and said, We decided not to conduct the interview, at least to save time and also save the interviewers money on transport. So we looked at the papers for the most appropriate person we wanted, and we opted for you. Also, we had tested your patience this morning by keeping you waiting intentionally for two hours. That's part of your interview. You won't be disappointed. You'll be shown your office and your secretary and the driver assigned to drive your company's allotted vehicle. You'll be on probation for two years. He got the job. On his way out, his phone rang and it was the wife. She said, honey, I have delivered a bouncing baby girl. It was their third child and the only female child. He immediately named the child Miracle. He got a double miracle same day. All the disappointments turned out to favor him. God positioned the mail delivery man to ring the bell at 10 a.m. God also held him up in the meeting until Mr. Samuel K. arrived. Note, you might be held up by issues in your life and hope might be diminishing and you think the chance is gone. But you know what? God's waiting for you to release his favor. So don't go back along the way. Don't quit. Don't be upset by what you face along the way. In fact, God has already deliberated on your specification. One more thing. You don't have to go through any interview since you have all the qualifications God wants. So my prayer, God will position somebody at the right place and at the right time for you who will ring the bell in your favor. God will turn all your disappointments to be blessings for you. And every positive meeting will end in your favor. And every negative meeting will scatter in your favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that is what I have for you this morning. And I know it is well with all of us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I am sure you are going to be the next testifier in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So over to you. Let's have a special number from the, um, the instrumentalist while we get ready for our offering. So please package, package your offering to say, God, I thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for the testimony you have not yet seen, but it is already done. In faith, you believe and you know that it is done in Jesus' name. Father God, we raise up our offering and we say thank you. Thank you for giving us what we are giving to you this morning. Next, next week, by the grace of God, we'll testify to your glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen.
Jesus. We thank God for those wonderful testimonies. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we have the praise and worship team, please? Give us some worship for a few minutes. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles they don't last always. Jesus. Your heart is broken. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands and say, and say Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I, I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way. I can make it with him I know with him 
receive our worship. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As you remain standing, the Lord has a word for you and I this morning. And the Lord has prepared a vessel specially for this service. He is an engineer by qualification, but a seasoned minister of the gospel. Praise the name of Jesus. A man filled with wisdom, highly anointed, and never a dull moment with him. Praise the name of Jesus. He is my brother, he is my friend. Please put your hands together as we receive the ministry of Pastor Dapo Williams. Let me appreciate my brother and my friend. acknowledge our Father and our God. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. If you love the Lord, let me hear loud hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are in love with God, let me hear loud Hallelujah. I'd like to pray for you before we start. When I listened to the testimonies, I saw three things kept repeating. From the first gentleman, the two words, helper, deliverance. The second testimony, helper, deliverance. The third one too was about deliverance. So I pray for you. That issue that has been disturbing you, that has been stubborn, our God, our deliverer, will bring deliverance to you in the name of Jesus. You shall be delivered of that situation. In the name of Jesus, you shall know God as God, my deliverer. You will know God as God, my helper. That situation, God will deliver you from it in Jesus' name. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in this place, the angel in the house likes to sing. I like us to worship God now. Down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place. Help me. At your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place. Worship Him. In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. Mm. I seek your face down at your feet.
amazed at your glory by your mercy, oh Lord, I need, I need to, to worship you. Father, thank you. Please be seated. Please be seated. I have a special administration for you this morning. I've invited a dear sister and the best choir in the world. Just a small section of them. But this is my name for her. Don't, nobody should call her that name. I call her my Rosinta. Please let me let her come. Come and bless us. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, how beautiful it is. to see you moving oh how beautiful it is to see you move you've poured out your spirit your word and it came to pass what a fathers and mothers could only foretaste is now in a lifetime the after of days eyes are unveiling Hearts are aligning, dead bones are rising, his spirit is moving, say eyes are unfailing, hearts are aligning, dead dreams are rising, his spirit is moving. Can religion, his spirit is moving, his spirit is freedom. Eyes are aligning, dead bones are rising. His spirit is moving, his spirit is freedom. Breaking free. 
what you were And it's come to pass What a fathers and mothers Could only foretaste It's now in our lifetime The author of day Oh, just receive it Love you receive it Love you believe it Hallelujah. Just receive it. Amen. Amen. Just receive it. Say amen. Amen. I said, just receive it. Amen. God's blessings. Amen. God's favor. Amen. God's deliverance. God's favor Amen. Just receive it Amen. Please let me appreciate these beautiful people Thank you choir I'd like to start with Habakkuk 3.4 NKJV version Habakkuk 3.4 Keep playing in the background for me Keep it very soft I love that song Habakkuk 3, 4. It reads, His brightness was like the light, and he had rays flashing from his hand, talking about God. And there his power was hidden. This is what inspired this message today. And I title it, This Power in Your Hand. Don't you know about this power in your hand? Say with confidence, say this power in my hand. So I've come to let you know there's power in your hand. Are you ready? Say hmm. Say hmm. So I'm going to give you some scriptures as foundation of the confidence in what I'm sharing. I've always had this burden. My burden has always been the workability of faith. A lot of information is given, but no practicality. So I wanted to know how to fight the fight of faith because it's a fight. And faith is a contention, whether you like it or not. The minute we are man, God and the devil are fighting for us. But you as an individual must know how to contend with the spirit world. Because life is spiritual. The Bible says the things that are visible were made from things that are invisible. So we must know how to walk this spirituality. Because life is spiritual. Romans 15.4, I'll just read quickly. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Proverbs 25, verse 2. Is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search out a matter. Matthew 13, verse 10 to 11. And the disciples came and said to him, talking about Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? Question mark. And he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Psalm 82 verse 6. I said, you are God. All of you are the children of the Most High. Why did I read this? To let you know everything here is for our learning. And when we search the scriptures through the patience, we find hope. So this is hope how to fight the fight of faith. Say, there's power in my hand. It's very interesting that with the hand, we bless, we curse, 
we affirm, we welcome, we say bye-bye, we build, we tear down, we make covenants just with his hand. Imagine that. It is indeed spiritual. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them. Because they are spiritually designed. But today I'm not talking to natural men. Say amen. God has given us the ability to know his mysteries. You must know that. That's why the scripture says, seeing they cannot, they don't perceive. Hearing they don't understand. Because God doesn't want them to be saved. But to us, we can see and perceive. We can hear and understand. Isn't God an awesome God? So I will start with a story that will buttress my point of this power in our hands. 1 Kings 13, verses 1 to 6. Verse 13. And behold, a man of God went to Judah, went from Judah to Bethel, by the word of the Lord, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, O altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, the child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David, and on you he shall sacrifice the priest of the high places, who born incest on you, and men's bones shall be born on you. And he shall give a sign the same day, saying, This is a sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. So it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Arrest him. Because I want you to take note of this story. God doesn't just do anything. There are a lot of mysteries. The king stretched out his hand and said, arrest him. Spiritual authority. Then, God reacted. Then the hand which he stretched out towards him withered. So he could not pull it back to himself. <laughs> do you know your God? Do you know who you are? We are little gods. You know the Bible says where the word of a king is this power. This king spoke a word and used the authority. He knew he had power. And God ceased that. So with that I command. I have not come in my name. I have come in the name of the Lord. Every hand that is stretched against your destiny. Let it wither now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every hand that is stretched against your joy. Every demonic hand that stretched against your family, let them wither now in the name of Jesus. I will say it again. I've not come in my name. I've come in the name of the Lord. Then the altar was also split apart and the ashes put from the altar. According to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of God. So I prophesy to you that after this service, God will give you a sign. I said, God will give you a sign. He will give you a sign of deliverance. A sign that those who are with you are more than those against you. A sign that no weapon fashioned against you can ever prosper. A sign that you will laugh in the time of famine. A sign that barrenness is no more your portion. A sign that you have favor with God. And you have favor with man. In the name of Jesus. Say hallelujah. Remember we're talking about power of the hand. Matthew 19 verse 13. Talking about Jesus. Then the little children were brought to him. That he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. The question is why did God put this in the Bible? Jesus wants to lay hands on children and pray. So this is the lesson I want you to pick from this. Parents, lay hands on your children and pray for them. Bless them. 
I said, parents, lay hands on your children and bless them. Let me give you a testimony quickly. Our first son, when he was traveling, I got this nudging to lay hands and bless him. This is not something I do every time. So it's not a religious thing. That day I was prepared based on the revelation of the word of God. So I called my said son, kneel down. I want to bless you as your father. And I laid my hands on his head. And I said to bless him. I was blessing him with the blessings of Daniel. That he'll be ten times more than his peers. Everywhere he goes, ten times more he will show. He will stand out. And I said, I bless you as your father. In the name of Jesus. I didn't remember I prayed for him like that. About eight years after, he was talking to his mom. And he said, Mom, you know that prayer daddy prayed for me? It has worked for me all the time. It's been my testimony. I that I prayed, he didn't even remember. Let me tell you something about prayers for your children. When you pray, those words go into the spirit realm. Even after you and I die, those words don't die. They go over their head. Anytime they need it, it comes for them. So parents, there's power in your hands. See, there's power in my hand. I read the second story. Or before then, let me show you something about Genesis 126. Genesis 126. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. What I can deduce from this, man was created to contact God, to contain God, and to manifest God. That's why the Bible says, ye are little gods. Now, if rays of power came from God's hand, and that's why his power was hidden, aren't you made in his image? When you understand this, there's power in your hand. You know, I want to talk to you about the man of God. Today, the mystery is solved. When he's preaching, he always says, I feel the fire. Sometimes he says, I feel the fire in my hands. I feel like laying it. I had the man stretch it somewhere and he looked at you. And the man is my pastor. So the mystery of fire in the hands is solved. There's actually fire. But you see, all of us have a measure of this fire. But it varies in intensity. There's fire in my hands. So, 2 Kings 13, 14 to 21. Another very interesting story. Elisha had become sick with illness of which he will die. 2 Kings 13, 14 to 21. Elisha had become sick with an illness of which he will die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came to him and wept over his face and said, O oh my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it. And Elisha put his hands on the king's hand. See, all these stories are not written because God is looking for gist. You must see that there are some strange stories. When you say a strange story, there's a mystery. A king runs to a prophet and says, you know what? Do this. Put your hand. Let me put your hand on mine. And he lays his hand there. He now says, open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the, you must strike the Syrians at Epic till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck it three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry. Do you wonder why the stories are in the Bible? The man of God was angry. Said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you will have struck the Syrian till you have destroyed them. Now, you will strike Syrians only three times. The first question I ask is, why did this man of God know this kind of prayer? He knew that life is supernatural and he carried something. He knew by, let me put my hand on your hand. Let me release the anointing God has given me. That prayer started from a thought. So when we talk about faith, faith is an imagination. It's thinking. 
is a substance of things for, for evidence is not seen. It's been demonstrated here. The servant of God saw the victory that by the time he strikes the arrow seven times, he will have victory. Was the victory there yet? Then Elisha died. He's not over yet. And they buried him. And the raiding bands of the Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as they were burying a man that suddenly they spied the band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood to his feet. Even the dead bones of Elisha had power. See, the power comes out from our body. But he directed it with his own hands first. Do you know this about yourself? Say, there's power in my hand. What an awesome God. I'm going to read some scriptures to you to buttress my point. Then I'll give you some testimonies as I be closing. Exodus 24, verses 9 to 11. Then Moses went up, also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 elders of Israel, and the saw God of Israel. And they were under his feet, as it was paved with sapphire stone. And it was like the very heavens in his clarity. But the nobles of the children of Israel, he did not lay his hand to the saw God and the earth and drank. Why was this significant that he did not lay his hand? Because impartation comes from that. You can release spiritual things from laying of hands. Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him. And did as the Lord commanded Moses. He had wisdom because Moses laid hand on him. He impacted that by laying of hands. Acts 8, 17 to 8. Then they lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying of hands of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Are you seeing how power can be transferred through the hand? How impartations can be transferred through the hand? And you and I are made in the image of God and the likeness of God. Do you know who you are? So I'm going to share with you how to use this because there's no point of hearing it and not applying it. Because faith without works is the evidence of your faith is your action. Paul said, I believe, therefore I spoke. In other words, if he didn't believe, he wouldn't have spoken. Praise the Lord. Acts 12.1 now, by that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some of the church. Why is the Bible emphasizing this so many times? The king should have just said, oh. You see, the Bible talks a lot about metaphors, similes, symbols, interpretations to express the mind of God. 1 Timothy 5.22 This one is also a caution. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sin. Keep yourself pure. So that means by laying hands, you can share in people's sin. God is not just saying a story. These are words from the holy book. That's why I don't let anybody just lay hands on me. I don't want to partake in anyone's sin unless God is the one that leads me to do it. Praise the Lord. Good. I'm making good time. Thank you, Father. Well, you also know Acts 13, 31. Then having fasted and prayed, they lay hands on them and send them away. Say, I have power in my hands. You have power in your hands. Now you're going to use it. Ezekiel. I like this one. It's another interesting one. Ezekiel 34, 35. Verses 1 to 4. I read quickly. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Say to it, thus says the Lord. Yeah, I was trying to imagine in those days when prophets do that, they'll think they're a little uh, off. I know of a case of prophets when God says, Start talking to the river, start talking to the water, talk to the land. It's like I come to Lake Virginia and I turn to a building and I start to speak to it. 
you think there's something wrong. But these stories are written for our learning. Behold, O Mount Seir, I'm against you. I will stretch out my hands against you. Make you most desolate, and I shall lay your cities waste. You shall be desolate, then you shall know that I am the Lord. Why did God have to say this? So I pray for you. Hmm. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Anyone that is against you will have to face God. I said, anyone that's against you will have to face God. God will stretch his hands against those people. That they will know that he is God. In the name of Jesus. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus. Ezekiel 36 verse 7. I like this one too. The first time I read it, I used my imagination. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I have raised my hand in an oath that surely the nations that are around you shall bear their own shame. Everyone that tries to put you to shame will be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. Why did God have to demonstrate that? Because there's something about the hand. Have you noticed that when men are having issues and they want to prove their point, whether they're born again or not, they raise up their hand. Do you think it's normal? Because it's spiritual. It's in the Adamic nature and the Christ like nature. I, I, the same hand you used to welcome someone, you also tell someone to go back. Even people that didn't go to school, those primitive people, when they used to welcome those people that come to that, welcome is this. Go away is this. When they shake hands, agreement. It is spiritual. The same hand. See, there's power in my hand. Exodus 9, 29. So Moses said to him, As soon as I've, I've gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more hail that you may know that the earth is the Lord. I like this kind of testimonies. A servant of God said something. He didn't say, I will speak. He said, when I raise my hands, my God, then the thunder will cease. Can you challenge situations that way? You should be able to. For we are made in his image and likeness. You know, I told my body is the workability of faith. So I'll give you some testimonies quickly. I remember I was sharing with a lady, and you know, some people think scripture is just... It's a joke. Take this thing seriously. The times we are in are very evil. You must learn how to fight. Whether you fight or not, it will come to you. I was shining somewhere and someone said, Ah, Pastor, what was this thing about fight, fight, fight? Hasn't Jesus finished the work? <laughs> he said, It is finished. You know, fight. I said, Go and see. After Jesus died, see what happened to them in the book of Acts. Was the work finished? Paul that wrote it, the book of Acts. One time they stoned him. They beat him. But Jesus had died now. Praise the Lord. So let me tell you some stories. This lady, I was sharing with her. She thought I was joking. I said, look, the position you have, you have to know how to fight and you have to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. The Bible uses the type and shadow. When David wrote, he said, he stopped my hands to fight, my fingers to walk. Today our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty to go to the pulling down of strongholds. They are spiritual. Casting their imaginations, holding every thought captive with the spirit of God. So she just was at a meeting. I said, in that meeting, all sorts of people are going to come. Demonic chiefs, the ones that are not, everybody's worshiping something. So she said, she now came to me and said, Pastor, you won't believe what happened to me. After a meeting, a chief came and shook her hand. He said, she felt something moving from that man's hand and crawling up her own arm. He said, she now rebuked it. I rebuked it. The thing went back into the chief's hand. The chief put his hand down and looked at her. You know where I fear God? If you do not contend with it, she will suffer. I remember pastor's testimony many years ago when he said, when was you? I said there was a club around Oduono or somewhere like that. And anytime they passed, they would stretch their hands towards the club and curse it. Weeks after that, the club closed down. Do you think it's an accident? Let me give my own testimony. One day, say one day, to make sure you are awake. Say one day. 
We were living around um, Badagri of um, Adini Jones. And this night, it doesn't, things don't really bother me that much. But this night, the cats, they were, you know when cats are mating, they make all these funny sounds. But this one was different. It was a, because it's, it came from my, from my sleep. They were making some funny sounds. I knew these were not ordinary cats. And as I got up from my sleep, like the Holy Spirit prompted me up. I looked at the window and I saw the cat looking at me. I felt evil. And I stretched my hands. And I cast it. I said, broop, broop, just side rolling. Broop, 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 bam. God is my witness. You have power in your hands. That doesn't mean everywhere I'll be going, I'll be looking for cats. No, no, no. no. There's a spirit in a man. And the breath of God inspires it. I'll give you another one. I heard of a story of a pastor in the USA that said there was a storm coming and um, he had nowhere to go and everybody was packing the news people. He said when he realized that he can't go anywhere, he said he came out of his house. You know those tornadoes? I said he stood and stretched his hands towards the storm and rebuked it and the storm went around his house and did not destroy his house. I said there's power in your hand. Say, there's power in my hand. I remember another testimony given by Rod Parsley, a message I listened to many years ago. He was talking about Lester Sumrall. He said in the U.S. in the 1930s, I believe, during the times of the first, that depression, that people were killing themselves because people went bankrupt. He said, Lester Sumrall went to this Asian company because I was once had the money. I was trying to appeal to them that, please, be lenient with people. You know, people have lost all they have. He said they made a mockery of him and told them to leave their office. The story goes that Lester Shomo came out of the building in New York. He said he crossed the street and he stretched his hands towards the building and cast. Within one month, that company folded up. He's a man like you and I. But remember, intensity varies. Your authority is based on your relationship with God. Power is a gift, but authority has confidence. I remember another story, okay, by our pastor, Pastor Tayo. By the way, God bless him. God keep him. God gave him strength. He's been such a blessing in my life. Oh, I learned so much from him. He is my pastor. It's personal. He's our pastor, but he's my pastor. I remember a testimony that happened when God was giving me revelations of this. Because what God does, it, it connects the dots for me. It, it was one all night. How many people remember in that old place? Pastor came to church and he was very restless. And my grace is like I had to observe. That day was just... I said God gave me a very funny instruction. I don't know that all night. told all of us to stretch our hands towards this direction. How many people remember that all night? Thank you. We stretched our hands towards this direction. You know, I turned and said, okay, turn, stretch your hands towards this direction. Then everybody danced again. Said, stretch your hands towards this direction. They said, stretch your hands towards this direction. Four points. Said, God told me to do it. Why? So was later I realized what God was doing. He himself didn't know why God said he should do it. But as I observed over the years, that time we were trying to buy property. The first property we bought was in this direction. The second one was in that direction. The third one was in that direction. The fourth one was in this direction. Do you think it's an accident? Look at your hand. Say, I have power in my hand. You are the child of the most high God. Goat gives back to goat. Lion gives back to lion. God gives back to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I had another testimony by Pastor Samadhi Yemi. You know, God gives me things like that. I just connected it up. It was one of his messages many years ago. He said, anytime I used to drive to the expressway, you know those three Lagos idols that they put at the gate? The three funny men? He said that thing used to annoy him. And he would stretch his hands and curse it. Every time he would dress, he would and curse it. He said, lo and behold, months after that, Lagos State Government moved the toll from there. And that place longer became a gate. Do you think it's an accident? Life is spiritual. 
Let me give you another testimony quickly. Do you know that stretching out your hands appears 26 times in the Old Testament? God doesn't just speak. Let me give you a testimony that happened. I went to go and do a naming. And in that naming, I had done everything and prayed and gone. In the afternoon, the mother called me. She was panicking. You know, sometimes we do foolish things without realizing. When they were doing the party for the baby, she now went inside and brought the baby out and started going from table to table. A woman that she be, look at the baby that was born. She now said she got to a particular table, her father-in-law's table and his friends. She said there was a man. You know, women have intuition. Women have discernment. She said the old man used his left hand and put on the baby's head and mumbled some things. She said she knew something was wrong. She just felt... So she called me, Pastor, please come. I said, I'm not coming. I said, you go and tell your husband. Take the baby inside the room and tell your husband to lay his hands back on that baby and cancel everything. And that was her saving grace. You see, power must jump power. What confidence that man had with his left hand? He knew he had something he could release from his hand. you the child of God. You just do cry, baby. It's time to grow up. Say, there's power in my hand. You know the testament of John G. Lake? Went on to challenge the plague in South Africa. He put his hand inside. He knew something. He knew he had power in his hands. This is a funny one as I conclude. This one happened, I think, two years ago. I was counseling a lady. And then she was telling me that her husband was in a cult. And that he deceived her. Nothing spoiled. And that's, they stopped her from coming to church. When she got married to the family, they forbid her from coming to church. So she used to come for Thursday showers because they didn't know there was a church on Thursday. So I met her. So I like getting excited with things like that. I said, do you want to know you have power? She said, how? I said, listen, you are sent to help that man. Help her. Before you were born, God knew that. We're not supposed to run from challenges. It's your pattern with God that makes you challenge your challenges. But if you don't have fellowship with God, how do you know your God? You can know about God and not know God. Theology will make you know about God. But when you know God, it's by revelation. And it comes from fellowship. So I told her, I said, you know what? I shared anointing with her to the glory of God. I said, you want to have some fun? I said, because you have been sent to help him. Because your prayer must be based on love, not vengeance. Because when you have sin in your heart, the Lord will not hear you. I said, put your hand on his pillow. I said, Father, you sent me to this house to help this man. The anointing breaks the yoke. Everything that's out of God, let that be a contention from today on. And by faith, release it onto that pillow. Let him come back and lie down on the bed. The testimony was so funny. She said, she came back and said, when the husband came back home, he slept on the bed. Looked like nothing happened. Around 3 a.m., he just jumped up. He ran to the living room. I was lying on the sofa. He said, my dear, what's matter? I said, I can't sleep on that bed again. He said, some people are beating him. All his body is aching him. I said, you see, it's not about title. If you believe, show heaven that you believe by what you do. Don't talk the talk. Walk the talk. I said, there's power in your hands. So this is how you apply it. I want you to try it. Anytime you see people fighting at the bus stop, because it is based on love. Remember, it's not sure for the power God has given us for showmanship. The power is to show God's love to the world. I said, when you see people fighting, just stretch your hands and say, I arrest this situation in Jesus' name. This bit of violence, I bind you. I, I forbid it. I decide, and put your hand down and just watch the situation. Before your eyes, you see everything that to fizzle down. That's what it means that we should manifest God's glory. The world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are groaning. Why are the children of God? Yaiti Poju. Ah, help us. But we are just playing club. So when we come to church, we come to be equipped to go out there and govern. And when you look at faith, it said, he that comes to God must believe. And is a reward of those that didn't seek him. So when you understand this, we are the ones trying to please God, not for God to please us. We come all at once to just get from God. God, please. No, 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 no. We want to please them. 
So start trying it. You see your neighbors fighting, the man is beating his wife. You don't have to come out from your apartment. Just stretch your hands. Say the spirit of violence, I bind it. I rebuke it. I arrest it. Then put your hand down and listen. You will see the whole thing just has to fizzle down. Faith without works is dead. Hope you have been blessed this morning. Sorry, please rise. Yeah. Worship him. Worship him. Adore him. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. I said our God is an awesome God. Our God is an amazing God. Adore him. Now stretch your hands into the heavens. Say, Father, let us shake the world together. Say, we can say, Father, let us shake the world together. Say, Father, let us shake the world together. That is our request, Father. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I love this God. I love this God. I love this God. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. Tell him. As we lift your holy name. Mm. You deserve the glory. in our everyday walk with you. That in every way we show forth your glory. That the world may know that greater is he that is in us than he that operates in the world. In Jesus name. Please have your seats for a few minutes. Pastor Dakwa, thank you for that wonderful word. The Lord increase you the more in the name of Jesus. As if water does, the Lord will water you in return in Jesus' name. You wouldn't have it better yesterday. Your head will not lack oil. And your garment will not be stained in Jesus' name. Now while he was mentioning, something that occurred to me. How many of us are conscious of what we carry? We are conscious of what we carry. Praise the name of Jesus. If you're not conscious of what you carry, then you won't know where and or how to, to exercise the power in you. Praise the name of Jesus. And we spoke about hands being laid on us and us laying hands on things. 
If you're not conscious of what you carry, fear may creep in in some cases. But it's not for you to be afraid. Because you know who you are and what you carry. Praise the name of Jesus. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when you stretch your hands, when you need to stretch your hands, know what you're doing. Power is being released. Praise the name of Jesus. So know what you carry. That is the first step. Then exercise the power you have. You have the authority. Praise the name of Jesus. You're here this morning. You don't know who Jesus is. I really encourage you, please don't leave this service without giving your heart to Jesus. Otherwise, what he shared will make no meaning to you. Praise the name of Jesus. You're here this morning. You want to give your heart to the Lord. Please raise up your hand. We'll pray with you before we close this service. Okay. No hands are being raised. So we believe you're all born again. Praise the name of Jesus. Can we please rise to our feet as we close the service? I'd like us to leave here this morning fully conscious of what we carry and go out there to manifest the power and return with testimonies in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We commit the rest of the day into your hands. We ask, Lord, that you go before us to make the crooked straight, breaking the gates of brass and bars of iron asunder in Jesus' name. Today will end well. In the name of Jesus. Today will end well. In the name of Jesus. Today will end well. In the name of Jesus. We shall all return home safely. With testimonies on all fronts in the name of Jesus. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. The blood will speak and fight for us at all times in Jesus name. Nothing shall be missing, nothing shall be broken. We suffer no loss in any way in Jesus' name. Our victory is assured in Christ. And that is our testimony in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death and so sin shall not have dominion over us for the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and it quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Please, you do need to come to the altar to pray after service. Please don't leave your bags unattended. We appeal to you, please don't leave your bags unattended at any point in time. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the day.